Okay, one of, one of the most uh, important developments in contemporary international relations is globalization, which I think we can define as the increasing interconnectedness of states and peoples, both economic and, and other forms as well, in terms of culture, for example. Uh, there's been a lot of debate about globalization, and it's become increasingly important, especially uh, within the Western democracies. So I think we want to step back and, and ask the question, what are the effects of globalization? How should we think about it today, reflecting back on a process that's begun in earnest after the Second World War, but really accelerated during the 1990s? Well, one of the things I've learned over the last several years or come to appreciate is how important uh, human knowledge, uh, the, the amount of uh, what might be called human capital a person has, mm -hmm. the, perhaps a, a knowledge of inner profession or a knowledge about science and technology, knowledge about organizations, how to manage organizations, uh, has become ever more important as uh, especially economic globalization has progressed. How well a person is going to do in life, that person's life opportunities uh, today is much more connected to how well that person can be a part of a competitive firm in an ever increasingly competitive world economy. And I think the second thing I've learned is that uh, in many countries, and I think one would have to include the United States, uh, government policy has not been very effective, uh, I would say especially in the United <coughs> States, in preparing people to be uh, uh, successfully a part of this increasingly interconnected uh, global society. And we've had 30 years of policy directed towards uh, facilitating the intensification of global economic linkages, for example, through uh, uh, new agreements with, through the World Trade Organization, or for example, uh, the North American Free Trade Agreement, a number of other agreements the United States has reached with partners. So government policy has made, has helped enabled and facilitated uh, global economic uh, integration mm -hmm without preparing large segments of our population for successful uh, uh, participation yeah. in that, that more globalized economy. And uh, the chickens have begun to come home to roost. So if I, if I could just reframe it a little bit before turning to John, one of the things we thought in the 1990s, and I say we because it was kind of a consensus in the West and it was popularized by people like Thomas Friedman in his book, was that globalization was good for everybody. And I think what we find 20 to 30 years later is there are significant winners and significant losers. And, and Joe was talking about the kind of capacities one needs to be successful in a globalized economy, but not everyone has, has succeeded in that. No. John, is that a fair way to think about it? And, and what's the challenge ahead, given that? Yeah, I think that is a fair way of looking at it, that globalization uh, is, is, is not simply everybody uh, rising up to the top. It, it is, it is a, a dynamic that uh, uh, destables, uh, uh, destabilizes economies. It, uh, it's driven, as we remember, uh, and as we discuss in the book, we've had perhaps two great globalization ages, the late 19th century, driven by technologies of that time, the steam, steam power and telegraph and railroad and mm -hmm. trade and the modern capitalist system was being born in the 19th century. We had a collapse in the, in the middle of the 20th century, the 1930s, and then it was rebuilt. And uh, there was, after World War II, a huge boom, a golden era of globalization where middle class incomes went up and labor, la labor productivity went up. So I, I think that we're at the kind of end of that, that golden era. We're, we're well after it indeed. And that uh, I would just make two points. Number one, globalization is so deeply rooted in the modern world, uh, tied to technologies, tied to our societies, 
that I don't think we're talking about the end of globalization. We aren't talking about the, the, the disruption of the modern world in the most fundamental sense. Some might uh, uh, see that, but, but we're really talking about how we govern it, how we govern globalization. And that, of course, uh, is always a question of how you harvest the upside of globalization, the benefits that come from exchange and uh, travel and communication and all the things that come with interconnectedness and how we got guard against the downside. And part of the downside, as you said, is it destabilizes economies, it, it uh, undermines jobs that were once stable and remunerative, it creates, as you say, winners and losers. I think going forward we're entering a very contested period. I think uh, trade itself will be uh, debated. We have political parties changing their views on whether free trade is good. We have entire parts of our societies across the industrial world, indeed across the, the world as a whole, uh, thinking about their own economic security in new ways, worried about their security. So I think the politics of globalization, the backlash, the populism is with us for a while and uh, we are not yet uh, in the presence of a, of a new vision that would allow us to stabilize and govern globalization for the next period. Uh, and if I could add, uh, yes, John, Mike, yeah. uh, one of the academic insight uh, new features that we present in the book is a discussion of uh, exactly what John just referred to, that trade has become contested. And the World Trade Organization has done some, presented some statistical material that suggests that in the last uh, seven or eight years, there's been a, uh, a slowdown in world trade uh, relative to uh, world economic output. And that has happened for a year or two in the post-World War II <coughs> period. Usually then things turn around and trade bursts or uh, increases and begins to lead uh, world output. But it's been a good solid six, mm -hmm. seven years that we have not We've seen this pattern of trade growing, but at a slower pace than world output. And the World Trade Organization has referred to that as a worrying development. One possible reason is that in the, in the aftermath of the Great Recession of 2008 and 9, many governments imposed modest protectionist measures, which the World Trade Organization has done an inventory of, and the uh, even though we've had world recovery in much of the industrial country, many of the industrialized countries, we haven't seen a removal of those protectionist measures in, at the rate you would expect mm -hmm. in light of world economic recovery. And uh, they refer to that as something that's uh, something that ought to be examined. So it's something we try to highlight in this uh, new feature, uh, Academic Insights.